3 million points on my American Express gold card and over 1 million points with Chase Sapphire Preferred. Guess which card I like more. What's up guys, it's Colin Matthew, your business funding and credit master here. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down the comparison between the two most popular cards out there on the market right now, the American Express Gold and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The biggest question I hear all the time is which card is better? Let's start at the very beginning. Before you can even apply for the card, this sign-on bonuses for both of these cards are currently 60,000 points as of the time of recording this video. But there are very special offers and they sometimes run such as 75,000 points for the Chase Sapphire Preferred or 80 all the way up to 200,000 for the American Express Gold. Here's also a pro tip that some of you guys might not know about. But if you click around on the website and pretend to show some interest, open in an incognito browser and keep searching up the American Express Gold card, leave the page, come back, and so on, you might just see a higher welcome offer. And don't just take my word for it, but I've heard too many stories of people refreshing the page and suddenly seeing a bonus of 20 and even 50,000 points higher and added to that welcome offer. The requirements to cash in the bonus also differ. Chase requires you to spend $4,000 in the first three months of opening the account, while American Express have to spend $6,000 in the first three months. Not a crazy amount, just something to keep in mind, right? And that works out to about $1,300 a month in spend to reach the $4,000 for Chase and $2,000 per month in spend to reach the $6,000 for Amex. And guys, do not go into unnecessary consumer debt to meet these minimum spends. Otherwise, it's counterproductive to everything we are trying to do here. And you don't end up traveling for free or getting hotel stays for free because you bought a boatload of stuff you didn't need. Get into the habit of tracking your spending. On the first of every month, you should be looking at your spending for the last month using a budgeting app like Honeydew or Every Dollar to track your monthly spending. What gets measured gets improved. And by tracking your monthly spending, you'll know what your ordinary spending is on gas, bills, restaurants, groceries, memberships, and subscriptions, and you'll know whether or not it's enough to hit these minimum spends without incurring any extra debt. Do not just blindly manage your finances. You need to know what comes in each month and what goes out each month and pay yourself first. Set up an automatic transfer each month for at least 10% of your income to automatically transfer into your Robinhood or your trading account if you haven't done this already. And do not live paycheck to paycheck and end up poor at the end of your life, guys. But I digress. Let's head back into the video. Next up, we have their annual fees, which Chase is coming in at just under hundred bucks at $95 per year. But American Express coming in at the newly increased annual fee as of October 1st, 2024 at $325. Now I know this might have already made up your mind, but the credits that each of the cards provide pretty much offset the annual fee, whether you do the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Amex Gold. Let's get into it. Chase credit is interesting because they only give you $50 to book your hotels for two consecutive nights through their portal, making the effective cost of this card now $45. But something that I see that isn't talked about very often is the card member anniversary bonus, where you get 10% of your points back each year. So basically, if you were to get around 45,000 points in one year, which isn't that very hard to do, that's like 10 to 20K spent per year, about 1,000 or 2,000 per month, even a single guy living alone in his 20s spends this much, uh, you would get 4,500 points back, and that would cancel out the rest of the annual fee. Again, not a crazy amount, so you shouldn't stretch yourself out over $45 per year. Just spending something to keep in mind, again, compared to the Amex Gold. The Amex Gold, on the other hand, has a ton of credits. I'm gonna fire them off, so make sure not to miss anything, or just pause the video and look at the benefits on the screen. 120 in Uber credits per year, 10 per month that do not roll over. Annoying, I know, I forget to use these all the time. 120 in dining credits per year. And again, 10 per month that do not roll over. Come on, Amex, what are you doing? You also get 100 in resi credits per year, 50 every six months, finally, a usable amount that gives us long enough time to frame to use it. 
And finally, $84 per year, $7 per month that don't roll over again. Uh, but this is the ones that's not too bad because you can just get a quick coffee once a month and use it up. All in all, if you were to use all of the Amex credits to their fullest, your effective cost of the card would actually be negative, meaning they're paying you to use their card. I know not exactly how it works, but that's what I tell myself and it makes me feel better about it because I keep missing the damn monthly credits, right? Now, let's talk about how many points you get when you actually spend the card. And this is where you're going to see which card fits your lifestyle the best, depending on what you spend the most on. The Chase Sapphire Preferred has the following points rewards. Five times on travel booked through the Chase portal, five times on Lyft through March 2025, three times on dining, three times on pretty much any of the popular streaming services, three times on online groceries, excluding Target, Walmart, and wholesale clubs, and two times on travel booked elsewhere. And finally, one time points on everything else. The Amex Gold Card has the following points rewards. Four times points at restaurants worldwide, up to 50K per year, then one times points. Four times at supermarkets, up to 25K per year. Three times on flights purchased through the Amex portal. Two times on prepaid hotels and other eligible purchases booked through the Amex portal. And one times points on all other purchases. I know that was a lot, so I'm gonna simplify it for you guys. If you travel a lot, use the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. That's pretty much it. I guess if you're chronically online for some reason, you use 10 different streaming platforms to watch your shows, you buy all your groceries online, which I barely know anyone that does that, then you would get the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. If you eat out a lot, then the Amex Gold is slightly better for you specifically with the new changes they've made. Quick side note that I wanted to touch on before I finish comparing the two cards, now that you have the points, sometimes you wanna redeem them for straight cash or use them to pay for purchases on the card itself. Here's where Chase pulls ahead of American Express in the race. With the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, points are worth one cent each when redeemed as cash back, as Amex only gives 0.6 cents per point, meaning if you had 10,000 points, it would only be worth 600 bucks with Amex. But with Chase, it's worth $1,000. For both cards, points transfer to participating partner programs at a one-to-one -one ratio. Lastly, with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, points are worth $1.25 when redeemed toward travel booked through the Chase portal, while Amex only gives one cent per point. This means that with 10K points, you would have $1,000 to spend in Amex Travel Portal, but $1,250 when in the Chase Portal. This is pretty much the biggest reason why, whether you travel a lot or not, is important when choosing which card. And finally, some boring stuff that no one actually uses, but it's there just in case you need it. Chase has trip cancellation and interruption insurance. They also have primary car rental insurance, baggage insurance, trip delay reimbursement, travel and emergency assistance services as well. Amex, on the other hand, has trip delay insurance, baggage insurance, car rental loss and damage insurance, extended warranty and purchase protection. And there you have it, guys. Here's a 10 second recap of the two cards in case you forgot anything. Chase, better for travel when you book through their portal, lower annual fee, yearly 10% points bonus and better points to value conversion. Amex, lower points to value conversion rate, high annual fee, but offset with all the credits they give you for better eating out. Let me know what cards you guys have down in the comments below, or if you want me to do an analysis on another card that you've been wondering about. My personal opinion is that I love both of these cards. I've had both of these cards for about 10 years now and consider them to be solid daily cards for the majority of people. Leave any questions or comments below and check out the links in the description and the pinned comments if you're looking for business funding or credit repair. As always guys, thanks for watching. This is Credit with Colin and I'll see you guys on the next one.